Yeah. All good. Well, today's uh, sentence, uh, I think, uh, potentially brings to a close uh, a very tragic set of circumstances that ha has had an impact on uh, police in Australia, uh, the families of Jeff Bowen and Peter Wallace. After 28 years and extensive investigations, we've seen uh, Dominic Perry being held accountable for his horrific crime back in 1994. I'd like to acknowledge and pay tribute and express my great pride in the efforts of over 100 uh, police officers and employees of law, law enforcement jurisdictions around Australia, including the ACIC, for their unrelenting efforts to bring uh, this case to a, this conclusion today. Um, I couldn't be more proud of the, the, the relentless uh, investigation efforts that have continued over the 28 year period and the willingness to continue uh, even when things were looking uh, uh, quite uh, grim in terms of being able to get a successful prosecution. Uh, that commitment is the, the result, is the cause of the result we have here today and I think it should be acknowledged that they've done excellent work to bring us to this point. I'd also like to acknowledge the civilian witnesses who turned up after such a long time and uh, persevered through the criminal trial giving their evidence because that evidence has been critical in securing a conviction which has resulted in the sentence we saw today. I think we all take great comfort in the fact that Dominic Perry will die in jail. It's uh, certainly something that I think the family are very pleased with and from a law enforcement perspective, perspective we think this is a just outcome for the horrific crime he committed back in 1994. Commissioner, in recent years we've had um, convictions for three cold case murders, Adams, um, Suzanne Pohl and now Dominic Perry. What does this say about your team, the major crime investigators, and what message does this send to criminals? I think I'd like people to take away from this that uh, we don't close serious crime cases, particularly murders. They remain open, they can constantly reviewed. We're looking for opportunities to use new technology, uh, new legislation to reopen and examine the, the circumstances and to f find opportunities to bring these cases to a conclusion. Uh, there are lots of examples of uh, cases in South Australia and around other parts of Australia where a significant time lapse has occurred since the crime having been committed the investigation concluding and a successful prosecution. Dominic Perry's name now goes against that list of serious offenders who have been held accountable for their horrific crimes. How do you describe someone like Dominic Perry who you know, so many years ago um, we saw uh, horrible terrorism strike at the heart of South Australia? How do you describe him? Dominic Perry, uh, his actions uh, struck at the heart of the justice system in South Australia and uh, I don't have words to describe him. Uh, it, it was a vile act and uh, uh, premeditated, uh, as the, uh, the judge said, an act committed in cold blood. I'll let people make their own decisions about the type of person who commits a crime like that, but uh, I'm very happy that he, uh, he will spend the rest of his time in jail. Commissioner, 30 years uh, in jail, is it enough? Um, obviously, obviously we've uh, listened to the sentencing um, uh, remarks and I acknowledge that the judge has a complex task in setting a non-parole period for uh, a, a, a crime that carries uh, mandatory life imprisonment. Uh, I would say that I would have uh, hoped for a more uh, um, symbolic uh, non-parole period, but we all take great comfort in the fact that he's been held accountable for this crime, he's been given a significant sentence, and he will die in jail. He's been convicted for the, the crime of murder and attempt murder. Um, I don't see how double jeopardy would apply here. The, the, the previous occasion where uh, he uh, the, the case was withdrawn by the DPP didn't proceed to trial, so there's there's no issue of double jeopardy there, and I can't imagine that we're going to be revisiting this, this particular set of circumstances again. Uh, he's been convicted and sentenced. Can you explain to us some of the really trying times for this investigation, um, the impact it's had on officers and uh, the victims' families, um, some words to describe that. Uh, well, yeah, we go back to 1994, uh, the police officers who attended, the police and other staff who were working in the NCA office on that day have all carried uh, a significant burden as a result of what they experienced and what they had to deal with. Uh, the frustration of investigators in that first uh, effort to prosecute Dominic Perry, uh, you know, clearly that took a toll on those people. The, the fact that this has remained open and an active case in major crime investigation branch, 
that police officers have had uh, put so much energy into resolving this case, yet had to retire before its conclusion. And we saw that with the conviction. Uh, the number of police officers, retired police, who came along to listen to that verdict, I think uh, is a testament to the fact that they, they never let this go. And then you have the family members. Yet yeah, this is a devastating impact. And this, this, this verdict today, or the verdict and the sentence, doesn't ease the pain of the families. That, that continues, and it's continued for 28 years. And uh, whilst it provides some comfort, it, it doesn't mitigate the loss of family members uh, under such uh, horrific circumstances. And uh, yeah, we, we certainly feel for the family, and we hope that this helps them in some way continue with the rest of their lives. Thank you.